All right, what's up guys? Two things before we get started. First, I uh, just got back from family vacation at the beach and as you can see, the uh, yeah, the beard didn't happen again for the 35th straight year. Uh, I'm continuing to persevere, but I'm doubting it at this point. Uh, second and more importantly, this is not an official Intrepid video. This, uh, I know that Ben had done some videos, uh, some good videos for them about camera movements. This is just my own video. Um, I haven't talked to them about it because I'm going to be drilling a hole in their camera. Two holes, actually. So they're, they may not be, uh, I don't know, they may not want you to do that. So officially, I should probably say this is a bad idea. Don't drill holes in your camera. But uh, if you do want to, I'm going to teach you how. It's very easy and it's going to make a big difference in the camera. So what we're going to do today is put a Fresnel screen or a Fresnel lens in front of the ground glass on your Intrepid camera. Uh, very simple, uh, just a few, few tools you'll need. Uh, you'll need a drill with a very small drill bit. You'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a Dremel tool. Now, I never figured out what these were called, but you'll need two of these, these little ground glass clips. They screw in in the center and then they have these arms on them that you can bend to put tension on the ground glass. Um, I searched the internet forever, never figured out the official name of those. Um, I shot a tweet to Intrepid, uh, wanted to know where I could find some, and they were nice enough to send me three of them and a pen. So. Um, yeah, you'll need those, but I don't know what they're called. Um, I don't know, maybe if more people want this, uh, Intrepid will sell some on their website. That's pure speculation. Um, but finally, you'll need the Fresnel lens, or the Fresnel, uh, yeah, Fresnel lens itself. I had one previously from the, uh, the Shinhao, and I'm going to adapt it to fit the Intrepid. Um, let me back up just a little bit, but the, the reason that I'm doing this, putting a Fresnel on the Intrepid is because of the video I did and all the comments I got about selling versus not selling my Shinhao, I've actually decided to keep it. And so the Maxwell screen is going to stay on the Shinhao. And I just wanted to make the ground glass a tad brighter on the Intrepid camera. So uh, I believe that is the complete list of things that you'll need. Uh, let's get started and I'll show you how easy this is. The first thing we're going to do is just take off the existing ground glass and ground glass holder from the Intrepid. And that is as easy as just pulling out on this elastic band here, both top and bottom, and pulling it off. Now once it's off, you'll see the existing ground glass holder here is held in place with these two little screws. And get it here. And you can see how this little clip works to keep tension on the ground glass itself. Now it's very important, you don't want to shift the ground glass, the plane of the ground glass. You don't want to touch it at all because that's going to affect the focus uh, or how you focus and how your image is projected on the film. So what we want to do is leave the ground glass intact and we're going to put the Fresnel screen on the lens side of the ground glass here. There's debates on which side is uh, the best, whether it's the viewer side or the lens side. Um, I don't know the physics behind that, but I will say I've used the Shin Hao for about a year with the Fresnel between the ground glass and the lens and had absolutely no, uh, no focus issues. Okay, so you'll see that the particular, that the uh, Fresnel lens that I have, it was just one I bought at the viewcamerastore.com. You can pick these up at uh, B&H Photo. They're relatively inexpensive. But it doesn't quite fit in this little area between the ground glass and the lens. These little notches here create the ledges that the ground glass sits on and it interferes, the top one just barely interferes right there uh, from the ground glass and the Fresnel screen sitting flush. So what I'm gonna do is take a Dremel tool and cut out a little notch right here so that this will sit flush against, against the ground glass. Uh, let me blow off the ground glass here. You get the idea, just put a little notch in it, it slots right into place, flush up against the ground glass. 
Okay, so once you've got your Fresnel screen fitted, very important to brush everything off. Probably best to uh, grind that off in a separate area. I didn't really think that out. But um, we're just about ready to screw it in place. First though, notice that the clips that hold in the ground glass are virtually centered here. So when you flip it over, this little uh, area here, make sure that you don't put your clip dead center of that. You want to offset it a little bit. That's going to mess with my OCD, but you don't want to uh, interfere with this screw here. So what I'm going to do is hold up the little clip on the inside part here. Make sure that it's free so the little arms can bend upward and put pressure on the screen. I'm going to mark that and then drill a pilot hole in it and then we will screw uh, these clips into place with the Fresnel lens in. Okay, pilot holes are drilled. And we'll get everything very clean because you do not want any of this dust trapped between your Fresnel lens and the ground glass. So now it's simply a manner of you want to bend this to where it's putting some, uh, once it's screwed in place, putting some tension on the Fresnel lens. And you just kind of eyeball this. You can always increase or decrease the tension later on if you need to, if it's not holding the uh, the, the Fresnel lens tight enough. So do the same for both of those and then we'll just screw it in place. Okay, tough to see, but you can kind of see the shiny surface there. That is the Fresnel lens, the matte side, that's the ground glass and uh, relatively easy to install that. So let's put it back on the camera and I'll show you guys what a difference it makes. Okay, so I wanna show this to you guys in video format so there wouldn't be any like uh, risk of me editing one photo to be brighter than the other. Uh, this is just the standard ground glass. I took the Fresnel back off and you can see uh, in the center, very easy to see, but um, we've got a lot of light fall off around the corners and that's just physics. The light from wide angle lenses has to bend further to reach the corner so it's naturally going to be darker. Uh, so I'm going to show you the Fresnel lens here in just a second and you'll see that it really evens out that center bright spot. Okay so I'll pop the Fresnel screen back in and you can see what an incredible difference it's made uh, as far as evening out that illumination. It didn't necessarily make the bright spot any brighter, it just spread it out uh, across the ground glass. So if you're using a wide angle lens really a worthwhile upgrade in my opinion. If you only use longer lenses the effect is not going to be as pronounced uh, but with these wide angle lenses really makes a big difference. So hopefully this helped. Uh, if you guys like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you next time. All right, a little addendum here, and yes, I have had a haircut since the first part of the video, but everything before my little end title sequence it was the video I posted on YouTube, and then my friend Martin Quinn commented on it, and he said, how does it affect the film holder sliding in? I've got to admit, that was just a complete oversight on my part. I meant to take care of that uh, and just didn't, forgot for whatever reason. But um, as it stands, if you do everything the way I did in the first part of the video, you can still put your film holder in, but it's going to catch. The little screws are going to catch, and you'll have to pull out a little bit further on this to get your film holder to fully seat. Now that will work, and it will be just fine, but that's a nuisance. That's not something you really want to uh, be doing in the field all the time. Fortunately, it's very easily and very quickly remedied. All you need is your Dremel tool, again, with a flat cutting instrument. And what you'll do is where you put the screw for the Fresnel screen holder, you'll just cut, you'll cut a little semicircle to give it some relief so that screw can set in deeper. And if you look at it, you can see that now 
it's completely flush. So now it's not going to uh, catch the film holder when you slide it in. That literally took me about 30 seconds to do. So again, that's a uh, not a very difficult task and it's something you're going to want to do. All right, so once you get that taken care of, you can see just film in the back, get it pulled out, slides in, no problem. So be sure and cut those little semicircles. I went three, uh, three layers of plywood deep that provided plenty of relief for the screw. So now that everything's flush, your film holder slides right in. Um, so yeah, make that addition to it. Thanks Marty for pointing that out. See you guys next time.